how's it going, it's gentlemen? Welcome back to the Sandwich channel. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Gundam Astray Brew Frame D. So, because I need to show you the articulation first, so that's why I took off the striker backpack. Because the striker backpack is really hard to pronounce, so I prefer not to try to pronounce it because I don't want to make myself a joke, but anyway. So this is the finishing of the Astray Brew Frame D. Um, please forgive me if I cannot really fit the whole model into the frame because I'm shooting every review with my phone and it's really hard for me to get the whole gamma into the frame because you know MG kits they are pretty big so it's really hard for me to get them into the frame uh, I will try to work on that problem but uh, right now I'll just stick with uh, whatever I got right here so this is the brew frame D um, I do have a bit of opinion about this Gampa. It looks really amazing. And, you know, there's some small parts that I wish they could have improved. But anyway, that's not really a point. Let's talk about the leftover first. The leftover, though, is not really that much because, you know, the Astray series is just the universal runners together. So there's not going to be too much parts wasting. So the left out part will be the uh, waste part. And then this. This specific part that I don't know where is it and then we have the thrusters and we also have the this specific part here which I don't know where is it and then we also have um, the top of the head that got left out because I don't know if this is the top of the head or not this is possibly the top of the head and we also have the original Astray's uh, shoulders and also the head clear parts got left out because the head is obviously is new and the shoulders part is obviously new so it will be not using the universal runners anyway that's basically most of the leftover parts it's not really that much though so you can just cut them down and then store somewhere else for you to use it later but back to the blue frame V right here uh, it is a pretty beautiful finish i must admit and as I said, there's some parts that I need to kind of give you a little bit of information and overall the finish is pretty nice. Let's start with the head right here. Uh, at the head right here, you can see that this is a redesign of the blue frame and we can see two sensor dragon at the side of the head right here. You can snap that out and then put it on the hand as a individual weapon. And for the antenna right here though, you can look at it as a very long antenna. It's kind of it's kind of too long in my opinion but the antenna is pretty soft and i think they will be very easy to break so they are pretty fragile so i recommend you to be careful when you're playing around or when you're moving around the head because i don't want you to snap your antenna in half and other than that when we're looking at the colors on the head it's it's really beautiful. It's a mixture between the blue and white and, and orange. You can see that the colors is pretty, it's pretty nice. They are going along pretty well as well. But I do want to say something about the head as well because the head is, um, you put the head on to the joint and it's only one polycap right there. The polycap is very soft and it's, and it's really loose as well. So sometimes you cannot put into the spot correctly and you may damage the polycap. So please, before you snap in the head, uh, make sure you look at the parts before you snap onto the connector right here. So now let's take a look at the movement right here because the sensor dragon is getting in the way. So the articulation of the head is not going to be very good. As you, should, as you can see right here, my sensor dragon just fly out of the uh, head right here. And it can move, also move up, move down as well. Now let's talk about the torso of the blue frame D right here. This torso right here is there's no new part basically. It's only using the universal runners of the Astray series. Other than that, that's not much special. It's just a different color than the original blue frame. So because the very early design of the blue frame is black, this whole armor right here is black, but this time it's white. So it's taking the design color of the second L as well. But I do have something that I want to complain. Not really complain though, it's just some small comments that I would like to provide. So on the XG version of the second L, at the top of the torso right here, this two piece right here is blue and they did it by part separation. But on the MG, somehow you need to repaint it yourself. It doesn't really make sense to me, but you know, because 
in my knowledge that AMG should be very good at color separation, but it's a very small detail anyway. So yeah, if you have the if you have the time, if you if you want to repaint, then you just repaint with it. I can just stick with this one right here, just pointing that out. But um, I do want to say that the decals all overall on the whole body is really nice. I especially like these kind of logos. This kind of logos is my favorite right here. And let's talk about the movement right here. So it can move side to side, just but not really too much because um, the front skirt is getting in the way. So you can't really move side to side too much. We can move, we can move. Uh, there's a initial joint right here where you can move a little bit and you can also move front and back for a little bit as well because the connection is a big ball joint so you can adjust the angle as well and this time i really like this part right here is the cockpit door so the cockpit door is really easy to open unlike the rg the rg version oh my god the rg version was a hell and you know it's really easy right here you just basically pull down and then open it up and you can see Murakamo guy sitting in the cockpit right here because for those of you who watch my RG review of the Astri series I all like I always need to take out tools and then kind of pick the cockpit open now looking at this so the torso is as difficult as uh, before it's just the same thing you just need to pull 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 pull, pull, pull out oops you just need to put out pull out the pull out the parts and then you'll lift it up and there you go so the MG cockpit, they did a really good job and it's really easy to open. I absolutely love it and I can play with it for a very long time. Let's look at the shoulders and arms right here. So first for the shoulders, we got a small joint in there. So where the shoulders can bend by itself at the top of the shoulder, each shoulder will contain two of the stealth Doragon and you can pull out and then use it as an individual weapon as well. And then for the articulation though, it's pretty nice. So first it can move to the front pretty well, lift up because the shoulder armor is really, because the shoulder is really big. So it kind of affecting the articulation. For the bending though, it's pretty nice. It can bend, it can touching the shoulder. And then for the individual small part at the forearm right here is also movable as well. And then for the whole arm right here, it's ro it can be rotate because the blade gun is getting in the way, so I don't want to break the blade. And at the back of the hand right here, we can see this blade gun right here. This is the main weapon of the Blue Frame D. Sadly, there's no rotation on this blade gun, so you cannot flip the blade to the front. This white part of the blade right here is stickers. Um, I wish it's part separation, but fine. Uh, other than that, uh, most of the articulation on the hands are pretty good. For the hands option right here, uh, we have the full movable hand right here. The thumb and the index finger is a uh, separate joint and then the rest will be sticking together and move together as well. So I think that the whole shoulders, the whole arm articulation is pretty nice as well. Let's look at the waist right here. The waist is way different than the design on XG and RG because the XG and the RG version of it, the front skirt can be moved. But this time, the front skirt is a very big ball joint and it cannot move other than that. So what they did is they have this joint right here where you can open up and allow the legs to move. Uh, I kind of like the design that uh, on the ROG and the XG because it felt more realistic. This design though, um, it's good, but I don't really like the concept. And looking at the side right here, we can see two sword Doragon right here. The sword Doragon though, I do want to have something to warn you is because on the instruction menu is really unclear on how did you slide in the parts. So just slide in the part carefully because this blade right here, the material is quite soft and you will damage the parts. So when you're sliding the parts together, just be careful. And I do want to say something about this side skirt is because it's a ball joint and, it's, and it is absolutely like very easy to pop out. And I don't like that kind of feeling. And at the back skirt right here is slightly movable. It's not really that much. And other than that, that's not much interesting part about the waist right here. So first, uh, kicking to the front, it is possible. And then, you know, when you pull out the part, kicking to the side and the legs joint is not really stable. So sometimes it will kind of like fly out. Kicking to the side is possible as well. And then when we click, uh, and then kicking to the back is uh, pretty good as well. It can achieve to 90 degrees. And then the bending though, 
um, is pretty nice. And we can see a lot of decals on the legs right here. And then the feet down here, we can move up and then the tip of the feet can be moved as well. And then we, this is a ball joint as well. So you can move around very freely as well. And then this small white piece right here is also having a little bit movement as well. Now let's take a look on the back before we introduce the backpack. So this back right here is a pretty standard thing and it's pretty boring is basically it look it really looks like the design on the strike on them because you know is is equipping on the strike backpack duh and it also features the same thing on the rg where you can lower the backpack as well but i do want to warn you about something right here because this gray piece right here is the part that you need to watch out the gray piece is extremely soft and it's really fragile mine has already got a little white on it because when you pull down the backpack if you pull it incorrectly you will damage this gray part and this gray part only provide you one in the kit so basically if you broke this part then you can say bye bye to your backpack and i just want to tell you that please be careful when you try to lower your backpack because this gray piece right here is extremely soft and is extremely fragile mine is already damaging so i i like really afraid to show you this part but i'm just telling you that you can pull down the backpack just be just be patient, be careful. Now, let's talk about the Vuiva Striker. I finally got it correct. And this is the Vuiva Striker. So basically, um, you might think that, wow, the name is so hard to pronounce. It must be a very different Striker backpack. I can basically tell you that it's just L Striker backpack and then just put on two beam dragon right here and then they call it a new backpack. It's pretty ridiculous, I know, but we just have to deal with it. So basically, if you have the MG L Strike Gundam RM version, then what it does on that backpack is exactly the same like this one. So just briefly showing you the articulation. So first, uh, each thruster right here is movable because it's a big ball joint as well. You can adjust to the you can adjust the position, play around with it, and then for the wings right here, we can we can have some movements right here as well. And then you know it can move up, move down. You know move up, move down. And then once you pull it out, it can you can do uh, wider movements. Once you pull out, and then you can rotate the whole wings as well. So the movements on the backpack is really nice i gotta tell you that and then you know when you turn it to the front um we can see two new parts right here so it's this beam dragon right here so i'll just take it off and then just show you so this beam dragon right here so it can open up as well so that's basically it and i do want to tell you that i did screw up some dry decals only this side of the beam dragon have the dry decals uh, on the parts because for the other side of the beam dragon i kind of screw it up so uh there's there's only one side with the beam dragon i mean the one there's only one side with the decal and the other side is just the other side is just nothing but other than that this striker honestly there's not much to look at uh, if you want really want me to say something though is the color separation is impressive and I do prefer this color than the L original L Strike color because I feel like this color looks way cooler. Before closing the review, there's the last weapon that I need to introduce is this Simple Sword. Simple Sword is basically every dragon and then just shove it together with the boy gun. And what you need is just taking one dragon from the head, one dragon from the backpack, two dragons from the shoulder, and one dragon from the side skirt and then you can combine with the body gun at the back of the forearm so how do you put it is first the sensor dragon which is the one on the head you just put it on you just put it on here and then for the beam dragon right here you need to do some adjustment right here just fold it like a triangle and then just put it on top at the top of the body gun right here so it should you should have something like this and then for the for the largest, for the largest uh, sword uh, dragon right here, you just basically clip it with this white piece right here, and then you can move it around like this. Lastly, we have two of the stealth dragon from the shoulder, and then we just clip it at the side of the blade gun. And there you go. This is a simple sword. And then what you need to do now is just put it back at the back of the forearm. You will have a massive side of sword like this. 
which is a pretty long sword. And in my opinion, this sword looks extremely cool. All right, this is the end of the review. Thank you guys for watching. This Astray Blue Frame D design looks absolutely awesome. And I just love it. And if you have a chance to buy it, you can just buy one and have fun with it because you know, it's a really cool design and the articulation equipment is pretty fun as well. And it looks pretty cool, so why not? You can definitely get one if you like the like this design and it's a really solid kit and it's a really and the articulation is really good as well so just recommend you to play with it and especially if you're someone that likes sword this one will be a perfect fit for you because basically every weapon on this gamper is sword you're gonna love it a lot and you know thank you guys for watching this is the end of the review make sure you like my video subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because i will be posting the formation based review tomorrow so be sure you don't miss that review. And this is the end of the review. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.